So Nike have just dropped one of the most hotly anticipated shoes of 2023, and I come here to one of its flagship stores to grab a pair, lace them up, take them for a half marathon, and I'm gonna run you through the top five good, bad, and what the hell facts about the Nike Invincible 3, and why I think they may have made a mistake with this shoe. So here is the Nike ZoomX Invincible 3 Flyknit to give it its full title. The first iteration of the shoe was adored. It was the first daily trainer to feature the ZoomX foam, which before then had only been seen in the Vaporfly and Alphafly series. The second only featured marginal cosmetic changes with the upper, and the three, well, the three feels like a whole new shoe with more foam, more structure, and more durability. It's got more hype to live up to. So I'm gonna run a half marathon along here, the beautiful Thames Path. It's gonna be nice and easy recovery miles because, well, that's what these shoes are made for. We're gonna to get to the halfway point. I'm gonna sit down and have a coffee because, well, if you cyclists can do it, why well, can't runners? And I'm gonna talk you through the reason why I think Nike have made a mistake with these shoes. But first up, let's do first impressions. So the reason you'll buy this shoe is because of the ZoomX foam, let's be honest. You've had it in the Vaporfly and the Alpha Flies, and you think it's gonna be quick. It's not gonna be quick. This shoe is made for the long, slow recovery runs. And without the carbon plate, it feels like an entirely different shoe. I kind of dig it. I'm not a fan of carbon plated shoes, but this one without it, you can see why they need a carbon plate. This foam is so plush and spongy. Really feel your feet sinking into it as you do each mile, which is fun. It's not going to give you a PB like the uh, paper flies and the alpha flies might, but it is great. So it's got 40 mil stack, which is the max you can get for a legal shoe if you were going to race, which let's be honest, you're not going to race in the shoe, but to combat the 40 mil, they've had to build an entirely different outer. And that brings me on to point number two. So this shoe has something I had never thought I'd say about a Nike shoe, a wide toe box. I hate Nike shoes for the small narrow build they do for their racy shoes. These, these are big wide boys, but they have to be. They put the outer as rigid as possible to be able to cope with the amount of foam to give you that stability as you run. But that rigidity, kind of causes another issue in itself. But to be able to talk about that, I'm gonna need a little bit of audience participation. So if you're on the tube, take your shoe off and I'll throw over to future James to show you what I mean by a rigid shoe can be quite a dangerous shoe. Thanks, past James. Okay, studio time for a demonstration. Have you got your shoe in your hand? I want you to flex it like this. Most shoes will flex because your foot flexes when you run. The shoe doesn't fight it. The Invincible 3s, Absolutely no flex, even with my puny muscles putting a lot of pressure on it. And similar, this carbon plate shoe from Socony. Why is that? So to make the ZoomX foam work, Nike have basically made the outer a plate with an insert here as well to create even more rigidity. What happens with a rigid shoe? Well, my personal experience, there's a higher risk of injury and higher risk of fatiguing quicker. But enough about the nerdery, let's get back to James actually doing some running and watch out because I'm about to run into a tree. Gonna celebrate. Mm. All right, I'm getting through my coffee now and I'm gonna go into my rant. So, I have an issue with these shoes because they are Nike shoes. So, this has a ZoomX foam. You'd expect it to be the Alpha Fly, you know, expect it to be the Vapor Fly. Zoom, it should be quick. It ain't quick, but it's not meant to be. But I feel like Nike have really missed a trick with their advertising. If they were confident enough about the shoe, they'd associate it with the Vapor Flies and the Alpha Flies but you don't really see it on any of the advertising. Is that because they've had to create like a Frankenstein's monster to get the foam to work? Potentially. A wide shoe, a really rigid shoe, a, let's be honest, a little bit of an ugly shoe. It feels great to run in, but I'm just not that sure of it. Like, why does it exist? Just to show off that they could make a shoe with ZoomX foam in that isn't a carbon racer? I don't know. But one thing they are very confident on is their branding. There are nine Nike ticks and logos on one shoe alone. Angus, can you tell this is a Nike shoe? Nike, uh, no Nike, 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 Nike. Is there one in there? Yeah, there's one there as well, Nike. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've seen any other shoe do that. It's just bonkers, but I guess that's Nike's for you. Right, come on, let's get back. Okay, elephant in the room time, let's talk about the price. It's a Nike shoe, it ain't gonna be cheap. And at 170 pounds for a very niche running, the long, slow, steady runs, I'd probably recommend someone go out and buy something like the Brooks Glycerin 20s. Something that will do a lot more than just a very small window of your training. In fact, 
drop a shoe emoji in the comments if you want to see me take on basically every other Mac shoe for a half marathon and see which that one comes out on top. We could call it Battle of the Brands. No, wait, Conflict of Comfort. Right, we're coming near to the end of the run, so I better wrap up my thoughts. So I want to finish with the upper and it's kind of brilliant. It's really breathable, yet feels super structured. I normally rip through most of my uppers because I've got massive feet and massive toenails, but this feels like it might actually be invincible. It's got a reinforced toe box as well, which the ones and twos didn't have. And I'm kind of amazed by it. Have they actually made an invincible shoe? Uh, time will tell, but I'm definitely impressed by it now. And there we have it, a half marathon done in the Nike Invincible 3s. Oh, but what do I think about them? Well, by trying to fit in the Zoom X foam into a regular slow recovery run shoe, Nike have made kind of the most un-Nike shoe ever with this massive toe box, a really durable outer and a pretty durable upper as well. Would I recommend it for most people? Well, at the price point, probably not. But is it a fun shoe? Yeah, it kind of is. Should we get some more miles done in it?